the uh, so so we don't get too distracted. I, it's going to be. I mean, the focus of this call to action is HTTPS mm -hmm. experience for browsing to try to solve one of the four things I talked about: the browsing the web in a more secure fashion. And I believe we're going to get there. I would just like to get there three years faster, five years faster. Um, and the way I would envision it is that at some point we'll look back on this five years from now, ten years from now, and we'll say, oh yeah, remember back when everything was unsecure? And, then, like and then this will sound really silly, but right now it doesn't. Remember when everyone used Telnet? Yeah, and FTP. Then, and, and then SSH happened? Yeah. I mean, it's not like things can't get better. Things have. Right. Yeah, and, and the concept of default uh, settings is a concept that works. Several years ago, the Air Force mandated when they purchased computers from major vendors that there be a series of default settings before the computers even went into the boxes. That freed the system administrator a lot of extra duties of configuring that particular computer. So the concept of default settings works. The other point I want to make that's related is we need to influence the outcome. It's not just the legislation that some people are concerned about, uh, but banks, I read today, are starting to shift the burden of liability uh, from online banking. All of us are aware that in the past they have absorbed the losses that were caused by inappropriate practices either by the bank or by the end user. Now they are going to change that to shift the liability to you. So if money is lost, because you were not using a secure practice, because your computer was not hygiene correct, because you as part of the ecosystem did not act as a responsible entity, notwithstanding the fact that the bank may not be acting as a responsible corporate citizen. Because they're trying to get, make money by pushing it your way. You've got to help influence the outcome so that we're not stuck. So that, that leaves us then, without going down a rat's hole before we open it up to the public, to the technology of it. And we're pretty much banking on, I mean, you've got SSL. And when we say SSL, we really mean TLS because there's not really any other alternatives. And then that means it's kind of voting for the lesser evil, right? And this is where MOTSI comes in because there's not a whole lot of goodness out there in, in the protocol, right? Yeah. I'm, so I would say that uh, putting SSL everywhere is certainly the low-hanging fruit. There's, there's no reason not to do this now. Um, you know, RC4 is 26 in order instructions per byte. That's the cost. I mean, that's, that's nothing compared to rendering out your Rails web app or whatever it is that people are doing now. Uh, so, you know, certainly this is very, this should be technically easy and it should be everywhere and there's, there's no reason not to have it everywhere. But my concerns are that um, that's not enough. You know, that what I don't want to do is, uh, go down this road where we say, oh, well, we want SSL everywhere, and then, you know, people actually finally implement these things, and then we think, oh, well, now the war is won. Because uh, it's not. You know, SSL itself is a pretty shaky protocol, uh, and uh, a lot of it uh, requires us to trust people that we should not be trusting. Uh, again and again, uh, the people who uh, ask for our trust uh, in uh, the certificate system have proven that uh, we should not be giving it to them. And right now we don't have any other options, but I think that it's, it's also worth trying to come up with technical solutions uh, to uh, cut those people out of the picture. And uh, so, you know, while I think definitely uh, it it's, uh, should be easy to put this everywhere, uh, we can't stop there. And uh, we need to continue, continue to think about, uh, you know, what we want out of privacy, right? That, uh, and, you know, also these concepts of privacy extend beyond the network layer, you know, that it's very easy for Google to say, oh, well, now we have SSL search, and so now we're helping you with your privacy. And, you know, that's simply not true, you know, that there's uh, the majority of the, the privacy concerns that I think we should justifiably continue to have uh, with companies and probably will always be in a continual tension uh, with, uh, you know, trying to maintain uh, the privacy of our data are, are not, not necessarily, are certainly not going to be solved uh, simply by putting SSL everywhere. So I think, you know, while we should, you know, definitely go down this road, uh, that's not the end of the road and the, this, this is uh, a struggle that I think I, will continue far beyond that. I, but you can't really get too much, 
if this is the beginning of the path, you can't, you can't jump this step, I don't think. I think you have to progress through this phase before. Right? Sure, but I, I mean. Because how you. you if, progress if, through the phase, but you know, well, be conscious I, of, uh, of exactly where it's taking us. Because if, as I, I share a lot of your concerns with the certificate authorities, and uh, you know, like, how many, how many uh, secondary you know, certs does, say, network solution sign that nobody knows? You know, how many yeah. of these secondary? So, yeah. so I mean, recently there's a, you know, there's an issue where there's a certificate, a, a root certificate in the, the trusted root store of um, Firefox, and uh, no one knew where it came from. And, you know, then people went and it said RSA on it, and people went and asked RSA, and they're like, no, this is an R cert. And people were like, oh, wow, there's some rogue certificate in there. And then finally RSA came back and was like, oh, no, that, that one is ours. We just forgot. Whoops. So, you know, certainly if, you know, people can't even keep track of what certificates are theirs, uh, that doesn't necessarily inspire confidence right. uh, so, in the long term. So, so one of my things is I, I think a lot of, some of the problems is adoption rates increase. Um, it'll be an opportunity for companies to innovate and come up with solutions to solve either easier ways to deploy this, you know, lower CPU load, lower cost, whatever it happens to be. I mean, there will be definitely some pr challenges that need to be solved, and I view those as opportunities. So, um, but yeah, I don't like being beholden to certificate authorities. Sure. I, We're I'm more like on it. I'm liking the perspectives <laughs> or something, but there's got to be some, yeah. Okay, so. That's it. Any that's questions? all I have to say. Yeah, yeah. that's my nay saying. Yeah. So, anybody in the audience? We've got open mics right over there. If you have anything to say, step on up. And uh, well, Jeff, while we're waiting for the first question, one of yeah. the pushbacks that we had discussed earlier is that part of the reluctance uh, on the part of industry might be the increased cost, which of course they would pass right. on to consumers, standard practice. But I always find it interesting. There's always enough money to correct a problem after it's happened, but people are reluctant to spend money to pre prevent or preclude a problem from happening. So well, I think long term, it's well, going to be open smart. Right. I don't, wanna, I don't want this to be a doomsday scenario. This, is, this has got to be about the sooner you implement this, the sooner you can enable other, you can enable other types of behavior on the internet. You know, if, if this was already the state of the world in the uh, Iranian green movement, was happening, it would maybe be a lot harder for the government to monitor who their friends are, who they're tweeting at, who's their social you know, networking friends, for them to come back and potentially persecute uh, people because they're holding a different political view. Um, but that's not the state uh, Iran or the rest of the world is in right now. The rest of the world, we're sitting uh, captive to whoever wants to sniff us upstream, and, and that's not a world I like being in. So isn't a lot of this about what's an acceptable norm both for the vendors and for the users and what are we going to accept and not accept as a community? Well, so I, I yes, but the, the technical focus I want to work on is just that the capability for always SSL is coming. Do we accelerate that or do we just bumble through it? So, and I think I, I accept your premise. Right. I think it's important for us to. But, but I, and, and I, I would love to have that debate, an informed debate about, you know, as a society, what is the tension between privacy, you know, how much security, how much SSL, so on and so forth. But I, that's a larger debate. Right. So if we just n narrow it down to the technology is coming, is it good enough, or how good is it, and what are, what are our trade-offs when we use it or don't use it? Right. So that we use it. I, I, again, yeah. I accept your premise. It's going to be there. People are going to use it. How good is it really good enough? And right. if it isn't, does everybody understand what risk you're accepting right. or not? Well, accepting? and that's Moxie's point, right? It's yeah, not exactly. very good, but it can be improved exactly. potentially. But it's not like it's a very rich, rich ecosystem. Your option is SSL or TLS. Right. <laughs> Which one do you prefer? <laughs> you know? So let's move to the first question or observation. Hi. Uh, my name is Mike or X-Ray and I actually work in the financial sector and um, always SSL is, is an awesome idea. Um, however, that only protects the end-to-end -end communication. What I'm seeing is um, I think maybe we're missing the boat. I think it has to start with awareness. Part of my job when, there's a, when, a, when a business customer loses money to Moscow or, or wherever, 
is to actually look at their system and sh find out where the compromise is. Now the compromise hasn't been at our bank as long as I've worked there. It's very easy to find a compromise on a small businessman system or a consumer system. And, and I'm not wondering if, if the first point of attack shouldn't be awareness the, at the consumer level. I mean we have TV commercials, don't drink and drive, click your seatbelt, don't throw your soda cups out the window. And we even had a little bit of you know, identity theft that really didn't say anything about it. And I'm not wondering if the first step in this process is to educate the American well, consumer. And I'm going to agree with you that I think education pays off the best in the long run, right? A well-informed and educated populace is the best defense to a lot of things. But back to my original four points, you know, w w as technical people, if we're in a position to help accelerate the ability to compute uh, to browse securely, we should. I'm not in a position to, uh, you know, through besides these conferences trying to raise awareness, I'm not in a position really to affect wide scale education. I'm rich is in a much better place, but, but we are in a position to try to further secure browsing. Right. So that's why I've narrowed the scope. Okay. Small bite sized chunks I can try to make some move the needle on. I don't know how I'm going to move the needle on worldwide awareness on safe computing practices because we've been trying that for 20 years. Right? True enough. But maybe we can move the needle on this. Mike, I think you're in an excellent position to make some change, <laughs> to help influence an outcome. I am aggressively an online banker, but because I'm so paranoid, I check my balance every single day. Not everyone does that, but that's a good practice to do. And when my <coughs> home bank web page comes up, it alerts me to a phishing attack, but doesn't give the details. Now, that's alerting me but that's not educating me. Right. That's not even training me. So why don't you get the banking industry to be more aggressive in explaining what a phishing attack is on the web page and also to start commercializing this while making commercials, uh, television, radio, the whole bit. People are going to listen to banks when it talks about the money. metric that you love, which is called money. Yeah, especially well, when it's their money. Well, and, and actually, that's something that we've started to do because, well, because this is a passion of mine. But, but, uh, yeah, I just, I, I would like to see a coordinated approach. I think, I think more of us need to get involved in that yeah. process. So, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. So we've uh, got about uh, 15 minutes for questions. Wow. Um, so, I've noticed that things get fixed when bad things happen. When Dan breaks DNS, things get fixed. When Google says that, you know geez, we just got hacked by a bunch of Chinese people, uh, you know. What do you know? The date they announced that is the date that they enable HTTPS by default on Gmail. Yeah, things happen. <laughs> and and uh, so the naive approach is say, let's make more, more bad things happen. But we don't need to do that because bad things are happening. So what we really need to be doing is making sure that people actually talk about the bad things that are happening. The big thing about the Google story wasn't that it happened, yeah. it was that they talked about it. Right. And yeah. that's a big deal. And, 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 and I then, think of them talking out loud, same thing like with Dan on the DNS uh, bug, accelerated things a number of years. I think Google speaking out loud accelerated and brought awareness to a much higher level. Because for the last decade they've been, people have been getting hacked. Nothing changed. The right. only thing and, that was different was that there's Google. All these, there's all these cases where things are getting hacked and no one hears about it. Zippernet's been compromised, but no one tells, talks about it, and they can't for obvious reasons. But I mean, there's plenty of corporations that could be talking, and they don't, aren't, mm -hmm. and that hinders our ability to make change. So, um, so that, that that was the comment. I also have a question, if you don't mind me barreling through. Since but we're before you go into your question, yeah. I'd just like to say we are an industry that, for better or worse, operates an incredible amount on anecdote on stories told over beers we can't tell anyone and it, it's great in that we sort of get an idea of what's going on there we have no I mean, I'm sure half this audience is like oh, Zippernet's been hacked I heard from this guy on a question our data is terrible we make awful scientists and if what it takes to fix the data problem is mandatory disclosure of events that might be something right. to consider. Well, that'll be next year. Mm -hmm. But well, that, that already happens. There's the breach notification, breach, uh, notification laws. And actually, Which, uh, Adam Shostak has done a lot of good work of mm -hmm. uh, taking uh, all of the breach notification data where now if credit card processors uh, have data breaches, they're required by law to uh, publish something that says we were breached, this is how many records we lost. And Adam Shostak has uh, done a pretty good, a good job of becoming a scientist and mm -hmm. looking at the state.